Welcome back to Spank Ranch Garage. Another episode working on this 1975 John Deere 450B bulldozer with a six way blade. Last episode, we fixed up this engine. We did a entire fuel system refresh all the way from the tank to the engine. We've replaced an injector. We tested and adjusted the other three. Uh, we checked valves. We repaired a cracked engine block, checked injection pump timing, just gave her the full tune up. The engine runs fantastic now. It's time to get into the brakes, clutch, and steering. So when I bought this dozer, uh, it did actually turn left and right, but you had to pull incredibly hard on this left lever, and you had to pull it all the way back into your crotch to get it to turn, and it would sometimes lock up the track, sometimes wouldn't. And the right side seems to work okay, but there's a problem. So when I went to go look at this dozer, this is what I saw. To the untrained eye, this is probably not concerning, but to anyone that knows these John Deere's, the clutch covers are missing, which is just a wildly terrible way to destroy some steering clutches without even using them. Uh, these things are very sensitive to moisture, and they, are, they have a lot of issues with seizing up um, when people leave them sit and things like that. So seeing that the cover is not on here, I'd be surprised if this steering clutch works at all. And then on this side, it's even worse. Not only is the clutch soaked in oil, but the cover is also missing. This clutch actually functions and does steer and stop, though it probably slips under load. I couldn't test it because the engine wasn't running well. Uh, other issues are when you push on the brake pedal, the left handle goes up. All right, explain that one to me. So that's way out of adjustment. We got some issues there. Oops. I want to investigate this left side brake and see if it's savable without tearing the whole unit apart. So free play is supposed to be like an inch and a half or something. And this is like way out. So you're at about six inch there. This thing comes all the way back to, I'd say free play 14. Talking, you're talking eight inches of free play. Uh, that's no good. This side a little better, but still not ideal. So we need to get these I'm just going to start over with these clutches, just by the book, by the manual, loosen everything off and just start fresh and we'll see if it works. <clears throat> I have a theory, my theory that I'm hoping is that this one is so far out of adjustment that it's engaging the brake before it's disengaging the clutch and they're fighting each other and that's why it doesn't work that well. Because like I said, it does steer. and. So the clutch isn't seized, it does steer, it's just you gotta fight it. And um, it just feels terrible in your hand, like you gotta pull this thing so hard you feel like you're gonna break something, where this one's really not that way. So I'm hoping it's just way out of adjustment, but we'll see. Alright, so I understand the problem with this left side clutch, I just don't know how to fix it. I'm gonna try to explain it. So you've got your clutch lever here, or your steering clutch lever, whatever. It pulls on this hydraulic cylinder right here which pulls on this lever, rotating this shaft with these linkages on it. This bolt here ties that linkage to the, we'll call it your throw out bearing arm. So this just pulls on this, it literally converts that to a this way force and pushes a throw out bearing onto a clutch deep down inside there. And then on the right side here, you've got this nub sticking up with this bolt that touches it. That nub engages the brake band. So the band is just a brake band that's around this whole clutch that drives the final drive unit. So what you wanna do is adjust this lever so it pulls on the clutch first and has only a, you know, a small amount of free play, nothing like what we're dealing with here, right? And then when that gets to a certain point, this bolt here will engage with this arm and then pull the brake band tight over the clutch, allowing it to stop and the track to stop and turn. The issue is, is that this part is seized to the shaft of this. If you look carefully here, you'll see that this stop bolt isn't even touching, but they move together anyway, and that's incorrect. What you should see is something like this over here. I'll step on the brake pedal to demonstrate. Now over here on the greasy clutch, Everything moves like it should because it's greasy. It probably won't hold for actually dozing, but you can see that the brake will pull off of the clutch actuation separately. 
That is not happening on the left side. Hence, that is why the clutch lever is moving when you engage the brake pedal. Yeah, so this part's supposed to be locked to the shaft. This is supposed to be floating on the shaft and only rotate when this bolt contacts it. That's how you set that timing between when the clutch disengages and the brake engages. And in the situation I'm in right now, uh, that just ain't happening. That thing is seized up. So the other option, I'm going to hammer on it a little more. The other option is pull the pig mat out and start getting the torch down in there. Try to heat this whole thing up. That should expand that on the shaft. Maybe get it to move and get some oil under it. Well, boys, a little hammering and some coil. And we have some movement. It's minimal, but there's movement. I'm in here adjusting this clutch. And my whole long handle flex head quarter inch snap on ratchet falls down the hole and into the bottom of the clutch housing and I, I cannot get it out i can't even see it I'm peeping through here at the brake adjustment side cannot see it in there either unfortunately it leaves me with pulling off this side battery box and gear selector and all that crap and then pulling the top clutch cover off hopefully be able to get in there and get that ratchet out not all is lost though. Um, it will be really nice to gain access to that shaft, maybe get that thing freed up more, and I'll be able to show you guys exactly how these clutches are supposed to work. So maybe not all is lost other than my time, unfortunately. So when things like that happen, you just gotta keep moving and realize, you know, there's always time for another cold snap. I think we're actually going to try to do a compromise here where I'm going to leave this box attached to the dozer, just take it off the clutch cover plate and jack it up, try to sneak the plate out. And if I can do that, I can get in there and service what I need to without tearing the whole back of the dozer apart. The only reason I say this is because I want to know if that right side clutch is going to hold and push dirt or is it going to slip. If it's going to slip, I gotta redo that clutch, which means I'm pulling off the rollover protection, I'm pulling off the whole back of the dozer. I only wanna do that once. If I don't need to rebuild that clutch, I can probably do everything externally. So I'm gonna do the bare minimum to get my ratchet back, hopefully, and uh, make the adjustments I need to over here. And then we can try to go put this thing up against a tree or a dirt pile and see if these clutches are gonna hold and function as they should. Hell yeah, brother. Now we can really see what's going on in here. Yeah, well, there's the business of the John Deere 450. And my ratchet, holy crap, look where that thing ended up. See it way down there? Shoo! That is down there. I'm gonna have to suck that out with a magnet. So the first thing is I'm pulling leaves and crap out of here, which shouldn't be in here. You know, this is supposed to be like a very sealed compartment. But look at the health on that brake band. That thing is like new. And we have evidence that someone's been in here. So I think they just put clutches in or clutch and brake band. And I think this thing was seized up the whole time and they didn't know and they thought they never got it right But I think they did all right with it um, You can see down here That's the throw out bearing down there. This is the clutch plate the clutch the pressure plate and then behind it Is all the stack of discs and then the band on top and then they're separate They're actuated separately here with this so let me pull this and show you what happens here you might be able to see the throw out bearing pushing in. That all looks good. You can actually see the clutch come away from the disc and the brake band actuate. So everything works as it should in here. It was just seized up. So I'll continue to free that thing up and get my ratchet back. Come on. The other thing I'm working with here is free play on the lever. 
Okay, if you look at what's happening here, there's no action happening at the clutch. This is all slop in the system. So I'm gonna make some adjustments down here on the power steering linkages to pull some of that slop in. That way, I just don't like sloppy machines. I'd rather pull this and I'd rather, you know, start doing work up here instead of all the way back here. Pulling this thing all the way back in my balls was really getting annoying and I only used this thing for like three minutes. So I'm gonna try to take care of as much of that as I can as well here. Gonna need to see a little more cooperation than this. I wanna take care of this as best I can to give that throw out bearing a good chance of life. Hoping if I get this thing hot and get it moving on the shaft and then get some croil on it, we'll at least get some seepage, seep some penetrating fluid into there. I don't think there's any plastic bushings or anything in here that I'm gonna damage, but I guess we will find out. Interesting. It's interesting when I drive the shaft out a little bit, brakes are freed up. And if I pound it back in, now they're tight again and they're taking the shaft with it. So I'll keep beating it, working it back and forth. There it is, guys. Yep, there she is. That was a job, but it is broken loose now, floating on her own. So now the whole shaft can turn for the clutch actuation, and then the brakes can act just on their adjustment bolt right here, like intended. That was a doozy, but this thing glides nice now. I can move the whole pin by hand, and that is magic of croil. got to be really careful to not get it on the clutch, which I believe I did not, so. Look at this, one finger, beautiful. Brake, super flurry, everything moves great. This thing will actually spin in a full circle now. And the flag, or the, this is the throwout bearing actuator, actually has its correct spring pressure now. So it pulls itself off of the clutch disc when you let go. And that helps to pull the slack out of everything here. That wasn't working either, so we got that freed up. Clutch is still nice and dry. Brake bands are dry. The only oil is up front here. Whew, I think we saved this clutch. I mean, this was supposed to be, you know, the bad one. And my feeling is actually the other side is the bad one, but it would have never worked until we got all this freed up. This isn't adjusted yet, but this is the ticket, boys. That's what you want to see. Clutch action moving independently, and then the brakes come on. Super important that all this goes with just one finger cannot be any binding in here or you're just gonna have a bad time guys I do apologize for the you know crappy filming going on here um, lighting is tough and the fact that most of this stuff is happening under the seat it's awkward for me to get in there let alone bring the camera in and I can't bring this dozer in the shop because I'm afraid I'm gonna crack my slab so I'm doing all this outside and by the time I get done buggy work and work work and housework I'm always working on this thing at night and uh, I do feel bad I'm not able to bring better content with this, but it just kind of is what it is. Uh, maybe next dozer I'll have some better filming. Uh, seeing this side soaked with hydraulic fluid is not pretty, but nothing seized up. Everything moves really nice. Apparently this is not a three-quarter, though. Steering bell crank, adjust the nut on each steering operator, clutch to obtain a freeze level, measure the top of the levers. wants me to get the clutch adjustment correct first. Make sure the brake bell crank isn't touching until it just touches the steering bell crank, then retighten, and then we're gonna back this off three detents or one and a quarter turns. Well, I got them adjusted as per factory spec. Free play on the levers is a little more than I'd like though. It's still about three and a half inches. There's so much slop in the system. Kind of just is what it is. I could work to eliminate a little more of that um, clutch is fully disengaged by probably here, and then you start braking from there on. Feels like they got to pull back pretty far still. I don't want that. I don't want to have to pull it back into my crotch, but 
you really can't tell much without this thing running so i need to get this dozer mobile again which means we need to put that side back together now that everything's freed up i can make all the adjustments externally and i got to get a throttle cable in this thing because last episode we tried to save the throttle cable that's in it and i was unable to so i purchased a new one that's going to be a bit of a doozy to route that and hook that up so i'll get started on that and put this back together and I think tomorrow we'll take this thing for a spin, see if these clutches work, see if this thing will turn without having to provide an unreasonable amount of force. Oh my goodness, come on, you freaking turd. Oh, come on. I gotta understand why this whole console moves a little. That's no good. This is really an opportunity to replace all of the bolts that have fallen out in the last 60 years. Throttle cable's on here and working. There's the action there. And then this is finally a piece of the dozer now. You could climb up with this. It's the little things like that that make these things feel like a huge piece of junk when the whole gauge cluster's moving around and everything's vibrating. Just a couple bolts and a little bit of work. And that's all secure again. So now I can start putting air cleaner box back in. <laughs> okay. Oh my God, that filter is freaking gone. That's my fingers back there. This filter is totally rotted. The thing is shot, boys. So there's another problem in here that I'm not happy about. And that is water. Water in the transmission. Seems milky, but clean. It's also pretty low on fluid. I'll have to look up the manual, but I think you check this without it screwed on. And uh, we are not in the safe zone there. Just below it. Down here between the steering levers, there is a, looks like a drum plug, like in the top of a barrel. And when I got the dozer, this was loose. It's got a seal on it, but it was loose. And I think based on the rust that I see right in here, I think that um, snow packs in here in the winter time and then it melts and it thaws and it slowly trickles down into the transmission. So I want to dump this fluid out of the trans, put a clean filter on it. That'll get most of the water out. The rest of it is just going to have to boil off with normal use or whatever. Ah, hmm. oh, milkshake, baby. That is gross. So I'm gonna fill this up with fresh fluid. There's still gonna be water in here though. Am I gonna have to drain this again? I mean, this stuff ain't cheap. $8 a shot, I could have you know, a couple hundred dollars to flush this. I'm wondering if this transmission gets over 212 degrees when you're really working it. Ooh, ooh, ooh. <sighs> and that is full. There's also something red in here. It's like someone put ATF in here or something, which is also not right. All right, cool, we're getting there now. That is rank. It's got a smell to it like I've never smelled before. Damn, this whole system is just milkshaked out. I really gotta wonder how much oil is in here. <sighs> I 
Now I believe under this plate is a screen that's serviceable, a strainer or something. Wow. Oh my God, this poor transmission. Uh, uh, uh. Pieces of, I don't know, leaves. It's like a piece of plastic. This filter is disgusting. With this milkshake on here and the particulate in there, oh my God. You really don't even want to touch it. It's like it's got mold or like it's, uh, almost algied up. Holy moly, this is disgusting. It's like snot all over this. Doing this, getting covered in some of the worst smelling fluid I've ever experienced is definitely uh, really cool. Especially when it's 88 degrees out and 100% humidity. Definitely having a great time. Ain't nothing that hasn't been spilled on this thing before. Manual's calling for eight gallons. So I'll start there and then we'll check the level. It's checked with the dipstick sitting on top of the threads, so not threaded in. Engine off, but I will have to start it to prime the filter and everything else. I want to run it through the gears before we make a final determination on level. I got oil uh, behind the lens of the GoPro, so bear with me. Seems there's some video quality issues. Anyway, what I'm doing here is just running the dozer and running the HLR through the gears. So I can go reverse, high, low, and then neutral on the HLR. And then that's because I have the four-speed transmission in neutral. That's how I'm doing that without the dozer running. This transmission is separate of this one, essentially, even though they're in the same case. This one, you need the clutch to shift. You got to come to a full stop, put it in first, second, third, or fourth gear. And then this can be pulled reverse, low, high, whatever you want on the fly. Uh, she seems to bang reverse really hard, but we're going to get into that and tune the pressures on that uh, to try to get that to shift correctly and make sure we have proper pressure on our clutches. Fluid level looks good. It's actually a smidge over full. It doesn't look milkshaked yet, um, but you know, there will still be some residual water in there. So this will get me good enough to continue on with this dozer project. And if everything works out, I'll throw another $120 of fluid at it and flush the transmission one more time. But I'm not gonna invest that just yet until we make sure the rest of this situation is all squared away. Another thing to wrap up before I finish up this left side steering clutch is the access panel cover for the steering clutch. When I bought the dozer, they had these hokey aluminum plates just laying on here. It rained last night and these are wet and that's with the seat and everything in place. Water gets down there, especially snow. So if you're not keeping these things in a garage, you have to have the plates on here. I actually found one of the plates stuck in the undercarriage when I was working on the dozer. So we have one plate and I will use this as a template to make the other plates and get some bolts for it and get these threads cleaned up and everything else. But these are like some of the most important little details to these dozers. You run them with no upper cover, you're asking for clutch problems. These clutches are 
problematic enough. They do not need rain and snow and leaves and other crap falling in there. Especially, especially this, which is very sad. We've got a leak on the loader controls here, the dozer controls, right? You can see it's dripping down on the track. Well, it also drips under here and will leak straight into the clutch. And that's what happened on this dozer. So this is like a 100% self-inflicted problem that the previous owners caused. And that's just a bummer, uh, cause now I gotta fix it, but it is what it is. That's why you can't overpay for these machines. But let's get started on this. This didn't happen overnight when you can literally get, you know, I can't even see the bolt holes. They're so filled with grease and crap. So I gotta clean up this whole surface and then we'll see if these plates are symmetrical. And if they are, I'll use the one plate that I have as a template to fabricate a new one and some new gaskets. Maybe run these without plug covers so long the threads aren't even recognizable anymore. Aluminum will be fine. That is an OEM John Deere part. Every job on this trip to the hardware store, but they got some really nice flat flanged 3 8 bolts, little RTV, little RTV under these that'll seal right to that cover. That way if snow and rain gets in there, it will not be making its way into the clutch housing. I was gonna put RTV under the heads of these bolts. I think I'm actually just gonna throw an O-ring under there and slam it down. That way it's less to clean up and you know we're not like sealing this under pressure or anything it's literally just you know, water can splash around in here and i don't need it splashing i don't need it getting somewhere it doesn't need to go so i think a little o-ring seal there the gasket underneath the plate and we are looking at success Maybe if you were confident your clutches were good and you're gonna set it and forget it, you could RTVM, and maybe I will in the future, but I guarantee you this comes apart again in a very short amount of time once we actually go out and push some dirt piles and I find out all these other problems that I haven't discovered yet. Smidge of RTV on here ain't gonna hurt nobody either.
All right, first push with this girl, just pushing a little topsoil pile around the yard, but you know, second gear, high range, didn't even feel it at only 1400 RPMs. Uh, it seems to move well. I can steer it with one finger now, which is awesome because before that, if you guys remember, I mean, I had to pull with two hands on that left steering lever to get the thing to turn. Now I do want to go back and make some brake adjustments. I want the brakes to come on sooner. The clutches disengage well. Uh, you pull them back about four or five inches, the clutches are fully disengaged. You can just sit there and kind of ride. Uh, but the brakes don't really come in until literally you're almost pulling the levers all the way back. So I want to go a couple more clicks on the brakes. Uh, you can go too far where your clutch will not be fully disengaged and your brakes are already hitting. You don't want that. But you want to be close, really. You want that clutch to disengage and a quarter inch later you want the brakes to start coming on. However, uh, the big smoking gun is this right side steering clutch does slip and the brake band doesn't grab like the left side does, as we'd expect because it's soaked in oil. So. Next episode, we'll be getting into that and we'll see what we can do. I'll tell you, I'm thinking I have nothing to lose on this and I may buy a gallon of brake cleaner, put a plug in the bottom of that clutch housing, fill this thing with brake clean and go run it and see if I can degrease those clutches and save them. They don't seem to be swollen. They still disengage right. They got plenty of meat on them. I don't think I have anything to lose by doing that. Let me know what you think. Maybe just use gasoline. I don't know. Uh, I'm really worried something is going to shoot a spark in there and light this thing up, but I'd really like to hear from some of you dozer guys that have done this for a long time, what you would do with that, or would you just tear it down and do it right? I know the answer, but I don't want to tear it down and do it right. Anyway, we are very close to having what I need here. So this now is a fully functional dozer. I could take this to the property and start building roads with it now. Um, I want to keep working on it. However, I need to fix this control make that tighter it needs a bunch of hoses it needs some bushings in the blade it needs a new cutting edge um still didn't do the oil change i said i was going to do things like that so it needs a lot of tinkering probably have one or two more episodes worth of that but as of right now this is a dozer you can hop on turn the key run it through all all eight forward gears all four reverse gears steer brake everything works so thanks for watching spank ranch garage let me know what you think in the comments and i will see you next time